So I've had several people asking me how I uh, create my uh, um, projection reveal maps for RPGs. There's several ways to do it. The first thing you're going to need is a uh, an art program that works in layers. There's a lot of different programs out there. All pretty much do the same thing. The one I use is uh, Paint Shop Pro uh, by Jask Software. Uh, I use Paint Shop Pro 7. I think there's been about five upgrades in it since then. <sighs> Paint Shop Pro um, 7, I believe you can still find some free copies floating around. If you, um, I've seen used copies for sale on, you know, like eBay for around $15 well worth the investment. There's a lot you can do with this program. You'll be able to do everything you'll ever need and it's still at the same time fairly simple to use. So that's the first thing. You need to get a program that works in layers. Once you have that, there's there's several ways to tackle the mapping issue. And uh, you know, you see a lot of really fancy systems that people have created and sell and you know, if you don't have a lot of time, you don't have a lot of money, You've, uh, and you generally don't have a lot of time. You've got to get things cranked out fairly quickly. So at the heart of it, probably the, the simplest way to do a reveal map is uh, simply take your map, put a cover layer over the top of it, and then with an eraser brush, you just go through and you erase that top level so the layer below is revealed. This is definitely the quickest way uh, you do have to be a little more careful when you're going through this because it's awfully easy to erase in the things you don't want your players to see. But this does this does work fairly well, and this is a, this is a really quick system to use. Now, the um, what I'm going to show you to do how to, what I'm going to go over today is how to take a really simple, just a black and white scan dungeon and uh, make a reveal system that's a little bit more elaborate than this. Let me give you an example here. And this would be what the players see up here at the left. They're only seeing the hallway reveals as they go. This is the full map off to the right. This is just a, uh, a free uh, PDF file of an old D&D module I pulled off the web. Very simple, black and white, no frills map, but this is going to allow you to take any map you have at hand, quickly get it ready for play. Uh, you can do secret door reveals. And essentially, you're just you're just you're moving through as your players go. So, if you're interested in this, I will show you how I created this map. So, as I said, the first thing you're going to do need to do is have an art program that works in layers. You um, have to, of course, determine what your scale is once you have your projection system mounted. Uh, the easiest way I've found, and they're, they're all a little bit different, the more expensive the projection system, sometimes you can zoom in, zoom out, change your scale a little bit, but I usually just make a grid and uh, run that through the projection system and just see where it lands on the table. You can number this grid and uh, you literally have to get a ruler out and measure where that grid falls on your table, enlarge it, shrink it, you will finally come up with um, with a grid that generally will either be five five feet or ten foot, whichever you use for your system on the table. This grid that I've prepared here is the exact dimensions of my projection. In other words, when the players are sitting there looking at the projection on the table, these are the confines of what they see. So then I can use this on anything. If I want to throw in terrain maps vegetation, whatever, I know what to scale it to. I'll, I can scale it to this size and I know I've got a plain field ready to go on the table for them. So once you have that scale in mind, uh, get your program installed, let's, uh, let's start with a map. And I've got one off to the side here that 
I like to keep uh, just uh, keep my files stored off into the right here into the uh, in the normal paint um, program just to help keep things organized as I work. So here's a map I pulled offline. This is just a PDF file. This is an old D and D module. And the first thing you're going to want to do is um, take that scale that you've prepared so you know what size you need to be working with. Most of these uh, modules are 10 foot grids and you just need to play around with shrinking and enlarging it to get it close to where when you project this on the table it's going to be the appropriate size. So once we've got to that point we need to uh, we need to clean this map up a little bit. And here again I know it's just it's just a plain Jane black and white no frills very ordinary map. But when you play all the time you can spend more time trying to gear your campaign around the maps that are available than playing what you want to play. So for the most part we use a lot of these maps in our system and, and, and it's nice to have the pretty maps once in a while but when you play all the time your people are going through a lot of dungeons this is the easiest way and the quickest way. So the first thing I want to do, uh, this scan is a little bit grainy, I want to clean it up a bit. Now some of the old maps, uh, especially the old TSR classics, uh, if you're using those will be blue. If you're using one of those you want to grayscale that out when you start. And you do that by going up here to colors and grayscale. Click that, that'll make it black and white. Once you're at that point, you want to clean that map up and sharpen it a little bit. And we do that by going up here to Colors, Adjust, Brightness and Contrast. The setting you're going to use 90% of the time is negative 50 on the brightness, positive 50 on the contrast. That cleans that up pretty, not pretty well. Now my white is a little bit dull. I want to bring that white level up, so I'm going to go back up to Color. And you may have to do that, especially on the old faded blue maps, you may have to do that process four or five times. Uh, to get it to where it's uh, nice and clean and sharp like this. I'm going to go up here to color, adjust, brightness, contrast. I want to bring that white up just a little bit here. This eye symbol, if you toggle this on and off, shows you the map before and what it will look like with the changes you've got in these settings. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go with that. Oh, and before we go any further, there are two uh, menu bars you need to have up all the time when you're doing this kind of work and when you first install this program I don't believe they're visible so we're going to turn those on real quick You come up here to view toolbars you want this tool options palette which tells you the shape and the size of your brushes and this layer palette now these are where you stack layers upon each other and it will show each individual layer on here you want these up all the time. All right, so now that I have this cleaned up the way I want it, um, the first thing you need to do is get rid of any secret doors or traps that are visible because you don't want your players seeing that. So I'm going to copy this file and I'm going to just place that over here in a, uh, in a paint file. This is the old version of paint. And you can do it in uh, PaintShop Pro 2. I just find that doing these clunkier line working procedures, it's easier to do it in the simpler program. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. So the first thing, we want to get rid of all these secret doors. We want these hidden. Probably the easiest way to cut those out is just grab the um, Select tool, go over the top of them, right click in the middle, and cut. You can also use the eraser tool, you can paint over them in white, however you want to do it. Just go through and cut all these secret doors out. Then if you want to grab your line and just, after you pull the secret door out, you've got to repair the wall so that the players have no idea there's a secret door there. It's got to look just like a just like the wall would before the secret door was introduced. You can also go up and grab the select tool, hook onto a cut area and just oops, slide it across. That's probably the quickest way to do repairs. 
You can also cut a section out and find another piece of wall, copy it, paste it, and put it over the top if you want to do it that way. A lot, of, a lot of different ways to get rid of those secret doors and replace it with a clean wall. Now in some cases, um, you're going to destroy the grid line when you do this. Here's one on an angle, and when I cut that out, I've disturbed the grid. I'm going to zoom in on that. So that grid will have to be repaired, because you don't want that showing. Depends on your players. Some players, I've had players that will get down with a magnifying glass trying to find uh, distortions of where a secret door might be. And you have uh, three, un three undos. If you mess up and need to back up, you can uh, edit undo up to three different steps. That's, uh, that's basically the idea. You want to get these, these S's removed and restore the wall to, it, to, to the way it would look without the secret door in there. So I've already completed this. So here, here is the completed map with all the secret doors concealed. Now you do want to back up each, every process, you want to make a copy of that. I've also copied the one that had the secret doors in it originally. You're going to need that for later. So each step of the way, make a copy of it, store it somewhere so that you can go back to that. All right, so now that we have this, The next thing that we need to do, we kind of need to look this over and see how we want to tackle this dungeon. So what we're going to be doing is cutting out um, pieces to overlay on these rooms to hide them for the reveal. Now, this particular dungeon has a lot of hallways in it, a lot, lot of corridors. Now, you can go through and cut sections out um, for each corridor set area and then click on that and it just pops into viewing when they go through it. When I've got this many corridors, what I like to do is make all these primary tunnel sections one overlay. And then as the players go through, I can erase and reveal the tunnels as they go without having to uh, show too big a chunks or areas. You may have players coming in in different directions. You might have somebody in the cell escaping coming out this way. Somebody might have teleported down here. That also gives the, the option to simultaneously show several areas of this corridor at once. Now, the way to achieve this, at least this is the quickest way I've found. I'm going to take a copy of this and we need to um, these are JPEG images right now. We need to um, make this a strictly black and white image. Oh, and anytime you save images uh, for, for later use or to, re to refer back to later, always save them as a bitmap uh, or a TIFF. I generally will do a, uh, a bitmap. If you save them as a JPEG, it will dirty them up. In other words, once you have clean, sharp edges, a JPEG, uh, the resolution on that will, uh, will fuzz that out a little bit. So we need to get this, I know this looks fairly clean, black and white, it's not. There's a lot of gray shading in here. So we go back up here to colors, adjust, brightness, contrast. Here again, I want to do a negative 50, positive 50. Do that several times until this looks pretty sharp, black and white. Once you're there, go up to color, adjust, and then come down here to threshold. Set that threshold to its maximum, which is 255. Click OK. See how that greened up on me there? This now is a strictly black and white map. There are no gray shades in here. So we go up to the top bar up here. Right click. Copy. I'm going to go ahead and paste this back into Paint. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And go over here to your line, set that line to a double or a triple width. I usually do double. Color, I like to use either red or green, they stand out the best. 
And we need to come in here and on the outside of this, these hallways, we need to trace around them. Now, anytime you have a door and a connecting wall, yet yeah, that's where you have to be fairly clean and accurate. Be sure you split right down through the middle of the door. Now, this line has to be one continuous line. This, it cannot be broken. So, if I do something like this, miss a little piece, I'm going to have to go back. And I am just uh, left mouse, click, uh, hold in on the left mouse and drag your line. You don't have to be super accurate with this. Just make sure your line, does, your red line cannot go anywhere on the white and center on these doors as best you can. I know this seems like a lot to have to do. It really, once you get used to doing it, you can do this in about three minutes, three to five minutes. You can, you can do this entire thing. The whole map usually runs 20 minutes, somewhere in that area. So we just want to go through and do all these central hallways like this, which I've already completed. And it should come out and it should look something like this. That's what you should end up with. Actually, I'm going to open this up in old paint, just because I find the controls more familiar. Okay, so we've, we've traced this out. So once you have this traced out, right click, select all, right click, cut. Then we want to go in with our paint bucket, make sure it's set to black, color that area black. Go back up, click on your select tool, right click in here, paste. Now go up to images, or the image icon, make sure draw opaque is clicked on. Okay, this is what we end up with. A little dirty piece there for some reason. Okay, so the pe what we want to salvage are these inner cores. That's what's going to cover our hallways. So go to the paint bucket. Since we used red, color everything you don't want red. Okay, there's our hallways exposed. Right click, select all, copy, and we're going to paint, paste that back into paint. I'm done with that image. I need to bring in the map that has the uh, secret doors covered, which is this one. This is the one that uh, will be our primary map. Okay, so this one that you just created with the hallways, go up here to Selection, Select All, Selections, Modify, transparent color and it's red that we want to get rid of. If you would have used green you would set it to green here. Click OK. Right click up here at the top. Copy. Grab this guy. Right click at the top and paste as new layer. Okay, you'll need to get a hold with the uh, mover tool. Grab that layer that we just pasted down and slide it into position over those hallways so those hallways disappear. And that's pretty close. We can get rid of this image now. So what we've done, this is this the layer palette shows the different layers. We've just added a new layer over our background. I'm going to rename that layer, right click on it rename and I'm going to call it hallways. If I can type. And every time you type a, a designation, click on the one below it and back to it. Just uh, if you leave that open and you start working, it'll, it'll erase what you've typed in there. So we've created the first cover layer, which is our hallway. Okay. Now I want to grab a copy of that map. You can also do that here. Any to, you have to select which layer you want to grab. So like if I want to grab that background, I highlight background, right click up here, copy, 
paste his new layer. Now what I want to create now is a black layer to go over the top of that. I'll go up to colors, adjust, brightness and contrast, take it all the way down to negative 255 on brightness. That gives me a completely dark cover. Copy. And I'm going to paste that on top of this map. And actually, I'm not going to paste it on there because this is my final map. I'm going to move this over to the side. I'll just use this guy here. So this will be our final map when we're done. So I'm going to paste that black layer on top of this one. Paste is new layer. Now I need to be able to see the rooms below it when I cut them out. So go over here slide this little bar to the left to about 50 percent so that it makes that jet that uh, that complete black screen you can see through it it's a shaded screen now so i want to start covering these rooms up and i want to do it in numerical order so my lowest number room is 40 i'm going to start with that one zoom in just a little bit i want to grab this uh, select tool and i'm just going to Cut around that room, right click at the top, copy, go over here, paste it on top of this map as a new layer. When you paste into this, your object will always appear in the direct center. So whatever that room is, don't cover it up or you'll you'll get it, you won't be able to see it when you chunk your pieces down. So with the select tool, grab that piece, slide it up over the room. And we've just concealed that room. And that was room 40, so I want to go down here and name it. Our next one will be this little secret room here, or this uh, cell. So I'll go through, same thing. Cut a nice little square out. Nice little square, sound like Bob Ross. Go over here, paste it as a new layer, grab that thing, pour it up, put it over the top of it. Title at 41. And that's uh, that's basically the process. Now here is a um, tunnel that's angled, not straight edges, not square. So in order to copy that, I'm going to use the lasso tool. Oh, and at, after you cut a room out, you want to get rid of this uh, this box, this free-floating um, um, area. So just once you've got it cut, right-click in here, and it'll it'll get rid of that. I'm going to go the, to the uh, freehand tool, go through, and just circle that. Right-click at the top, copy, paste this new layer, slide it up here, and I've covered that tunnel up. And we're gonna, that doesn't have a number, so I'm gonna entitle it 41 Hall South. Now, you want to number and, you know, list what these rooms are on your layer palette. It's kind of a backup to help you get through as you're uh, running the campaign. You can also, as you're moving through here, if you click on an area, it will t it will light up over here and tell you what that area is. So if you get you know if you're busy, you forget what room you're in, you forget how you entitled it, you can always click click above it and it will it'll light up down here and, and show you what that room number is. All right, so you want to go through, do the entire map like this. Go ahead and get all your rooms covered up. Once you've uh, once you've got all your pieces cut out, let's see. I want to save this. I'm going to pull that, get rid of that layer that I was using on top there. Now you don't have to do this particular step, but but I find it it helps make things a little more clear. After you've done the entire map, you've got all your rooms covered and concealed, 
This is how you'll do the reveals as they move through the map. These little eyeglasses, when you click on that, it hides that layer so the room below is exposed. Once you get that done, go through and click all of those off so that you can see the entire dungeon again. Now what I want to do is where those secret doors were, I want to make a deal where I can have those pop up so they know what, what doors they've already discovered, where they've been. I'm just going to go through on the map that had those still visible, surround them, copy, go through and just paste these in here. I'm going to do it right on top of the level. Right click, paste his new layer, grab that guy, slide it up into place. So that's what it looked like on the original map. And I can go through and title this Secret Door 41. And then as you toggle these glasses, that's hidden, it's revealed. Hidden, revealed. So on the final map, you want to make sure that those are hidden. The glasses clicked off because you don't want them walking by and seeing that S poking out of the wall. You can do this with traps too. If there's a trap in the floor, put it in there and uh, when it's triggered you can reveal it so that when they, you go back through a room or whatever you can remember where those, uh, where those objects were. That's pretty much the entire process on this. Like I say, you're just going to go through each room, cut it out, So here we have a completed map. Now uh, this is so when players sat down, this is what they're going to see on the table. Completely black. This is the most uh, likely way they will enter this dungeon. So I've pre-erased a little bit of it out here. Make sure on your so here's all my layers. Um, make sure in all of your secret doors. Make sure the little glasses have the red X. They're clicked off. They're hidden. We're going to start with the hallway section. Go over here to your uh, uh, eraser brush. You usually set it down to about size 100. Keep the hardness up there in the 75 area, density at 100%. You can play around with it to get different effects. You can also use that to simulate lighting conditions. So as they move into it, Actually, I'm going to move that size down a little bit. So as they start to explore, we'll go up this way. Now I race down the hallway and I hit a room. So this is where it has the advantage over just erasing the entire map. I didn't accidentally erase into that room. I got up to the door and it stops me. I see that that is room 40. If they want to open the door, click on the glasses. 40 is exposed. Back to the hallway, because they'll continue out the other side. Start erasing again. Can go straight, can go left. We've got a door to our left. If they want to explore that door, here again I can click on the uh, select tool, click in that area, and it tells me that's room 41. I don't even have to look at my map. Open the door, 41 is exposed. There's a secret door at the back of this room. If that secret door is discovered, that uh, hallway beyond it is 41. If they discover the secret door, I'm gonna go ahead, expose that hallway, and I'm going to show that secret door, which is secret door in room 41. Click the glasses. Now they know there's a secret door there. It's been discovered. They come down, dead end wall. It's also a secret door there, but they don't know that yet. If they discover it, they find it, and go back to my hallway. Because any whatever's clicked on here is the layer you're going to be erasing or modifying up here. So now they've we'll say assume they've discovered the secret door. I'm going to show them the hallway beyond. And click on that secret door. Whoops, wrong one. So now that icon is exposed. So now they know there's a secret passage back into this hallway. Go back up here for a second, continue on. 
here again another secret door I click on my select tool click in that area they're going to go into tells me that's room 42 it's exposed oh and you can stretch that out where you have more um, of your layers visible now paint shop pro will only let you do 100 layers so if you have more than a hundred rooms uh, you're either going to have to subdivide the dungeon into sections or the ones you don't have room for simply make it one layer and erase those but the maximum you can do with this technique is 100 once you get over 100 layers um, you'll have to do something different and that happens quite a bit, but but you can just do like a quarter of the dungeon at a time if they're if they're particularly large. Whoops, go back to my hallway. So yeah, that's pretty much the way this reveal system works. And um that's a good basic way to um, to get your tabletop going. I hope this helped out. Oh, one final note: um, after you've completed the map, when the map is finished, you want to save that. Go up to File, Save As. You want to save that as a PSP file. They're also called tub files, but make sure you save it at this point as a PSP. You have to do that to preserve the layers. If you save that as anything else, it'll compress it into a flat image and remove the layers. And uh, as you play, and rooms are revealed, and if you stop in the middle of a play session, uh, you want to go through and save at that point still save it as a PSP but give it a different name so that it creates a different file uh, I usually just list play session and, and list the date that way when you uh, resume play and you pull that map up it will show the map as they've the locations they've already been and you'll have that original map for when you use it again down the line